everyone. Happy 2022. I am back on YouTube after an eight month hiatus because this happened to my channel over the past two weeks. Thank you so much for watching my content and bringing me back to YouTube. The growth of my channel is primarily due to this one video on my five income streams that helped me make six figures without social media. So no ad revenue, no sponsorships. And so today for my first video back, I'm going to give you an update on these income streams, but also share some new income streams that I'm going to be building from scratch this year. So if you're interested in building income streams from scratch this year, make sure you subscribe to my channel because I'm going to try to build some of these income streams in public. So sharing updates and giving you step by step how I built this income stream on YouTube as I build them. Before I get started, I do want to address some comments that I got in my last video around how a lot of these income streams are for people who are at least financially stable or already quote unquote rich. Um, I don't think that's necessarily true because there's two types of income, right? There's active and passive income. In order to make passive income, you generally need to have existing knowledge or existing money leverage to use to make more money. So if you don't have more money to begin with, you can't invest it in real estate and you can't invest it in stocks or DeFi or crypto, etc. But no one starts with money in their wallets in order to invest. You have to do the work to make this active income first, start businesses, do freelancing, work for other people to save this money in order to invest. So for me, I'm no trust fund baby and I'm constantly thinking about how to take money that I make in my active cash flow gains and put it into my passive investment portfolio. With that being said, let's start with my active income streams. My first income stream is still the same. I do expert consulting calls, charging $350 to $400 an hour. The people on the other side paying me are usually banks or private equity funds that want to invest or purchase a company within the industry. You definitely can't do this income stream with zero work experience. You need some domain expertise. However, like no matter what that experience is, let's say you spent a few years working as a logistics manager or a factory manager, then you understand the logistics business and the manufacturing business better than a lot of other people out there, especially someone who's just an analyst at a bank. Here's a LinkedIn message that I received last week, and you can see here that they are looking for people with e-commerce market expertise, and I did seller acquisition at an e-commerce platform before I went nomadic a few years ago. So the client here might ask me questions like how we actually reached out to different sellers, maybe how we organize them in account management. Do we split it up by vertical? What's the strategy there? What data do we need to collect, etc.? cetera? Um, and this just helps them understand the business better and make a better decision on whether to acquire usually a multi-million dollar deal paying me $350 to $400 per hour for a little bit of consulting and understanding the inside of a business is not a lot of money for them. And if you want to go into expert consulting, then you can sign up for these different platforms. You submit your resume, you link your LinkedIn, and then if you have the experience and expertise needed, usually an analyst reaches out to you for different projects. My second income stream is still running this entrepreneurship bootcamp for teens. At Betacamp, we believe that entrepreneurial thinking, technical and creative skills, as well as a mindset to create new solutions to the world's problems are not taught well enough in school. So that is the gap that we're trying to fill in the world to prepare the students of today for the world of tomorrow, where they really have to face some pressing issues that really need them to get creative and get hands on to build new solutions to solve these problems. You can think of our model like summer camp or a Saturday school program where students kind of do homework and pre-work to learn about concepts. They come into the live workshops and go through hands-on exercises with some of the greatest industry leaders of today. And then the following week, they build their own startups, applying what they learned over the last while. Students from Beta Camp have left the program building new businesses that raise hundreds of thousands of dollars right away while they're still in high school, but also walk away with a mindset and confidence to reach out to mentors and to capture opportunities that aren't usually available for high school students. 
If you want to build an income stream like Betacamp, you have to go out and look into the world at what is missing, what is needed that you can go create a solution for. And I have this video about how to find business ideas that will teach you how to look for these problems. Moving on to the new income streams that I'm building from scratch in 2022. The first one is we're going to start monetizing a community that I started building last year. So in March 2021, myself and Emily Fang, who is my co-founder, we started a community for Asian female nomads. A community where anyone identifying as Asian and female can come together no matter where they are on their journeys to financial and location freedom. We bring these women together to network, to inspire each other. We run workshops to help them build businesses, start content creation accounts, and figure out how to deal with taxes, etc. Many of the things that I talk about as well on this channel. And this year, because we've reached a significant number of members now who are interested in doing something more beyond the community, we're thinking about launching a few different products through this community because we already have an audience. So the first one being retreats. This is a great way for women to come together and we can run different creative workshops, business workshops, etc. to help them achieve their goals. And then number two is I've been looking into DAOs, which is Decentralized Autonomous Organizations. This is a Web3 term. It's basically a community-owned group where everyone shares in the upside of whatever is done within this organization. And I'm thinking about maybe creating a DAO for investing together or a venture studio where we have so much talent in this community. There's engineers, designers, community builders, salespeople, entrepreneurs of all kinds. And if we can come together and build better products that are you know, beneficial for women, and especially women travelers, potentially moms who need more world schooling tools to educate their kids while still being nomadic. Those are all just examples and ideas of what we can come together to build as a product. And then we can all share in the upside together. The second new income stream that I'm building is selling this course called Break Into Tech. So two years ago, no, three years ago now, I did some career coaching on helping non-technical talent break into the tech industry. A lot of the jobs in the tech industry are forever remote. So if you want to travel the world and work from your laptop, then one of the best ways to do it is to join a tech company that lets you work remotely on your laptop anywhere. Job hunting is really, really hard, especially for non-technical people who want to break into tech. I started career coaching because I launched this article about the six things that I learned while job hunting in San Francisco that went viral in 2016. And I started getting a lot of people who read my article and reached out to me on LinkedIn, asking me for help, asking me for calls, asking me for coaching. And so I started doing a bit of that on the side, but didn't have enough time to keep doing that. I recorded a lot of the lessons and best practices around job hunting into a video course that is now slightly outdated because it was pre-pandemic. So what I'm going to do is take this pre-pandemic career course and I'm going to turn it into a ebook guide. The worksheets that I still have, I'm going to update them. I'm going to add sections like how to break into Web3. I'll add a section around terminology because I realize a lot of people who want to break into tech from a non-technical profession often don't know how to speak the language. This is something that I've never done before. I've never sold a low cost product, but I really want to challenge myself to be able to scale a product that requires high volume because the product is much cheaper. In the meantime, if you are interested in breaking into tech, you want to get your first job in the tech industry, my course and my one-on-one -on -one consulting has helped dozens of people land their first jobs in tech. This is just turning it into a more accessible way where you can self-study. That's something that you're interested in. I'm putting the pre-launch guide below for only $10, which is the cheapest that it'll ever be. And I'm planning on raising the price for every 30 people that buy this guide. It'll definitely still stay affordable for everyone who's looking for a job. And finally, the third income stream that I'm adding to my active income portfolio is YouTube. As of today, I can finally monetize on YouTube now, thanks to all of you. And this all happened over the last month. I am really, really grateful. I will continue con creating more useful videos that are hopefully beneficial to everyone. So 
Lastly, as always, I'm always thinking about what else I can be building and what other opportunities there are out there. Things that have my eye right now are, you know, Web3 in general, it is a wild time out there. I think building a company in the Web3 space is a goal of mine this year, but I'm just not sure quite yet what that will be. Doing a lot of customer interviews right now, but nothing right now to share with you guys on YouTube. The next thing I'm thinking about is actually I'm getting married this year and there's actually a lot of products around the wedding space that isn't done yet that I would really like myself. So I think I'll just create these products myself and if I find them great and useful, then maybe I'll start an e-commerce company or something selling these products. Okay, moving on to my passive income portfolio of investments. Mostly not changed very much since March, which was the date of my last video. 401k still takes up a huge portion of the portfolio. It's actually a huge generator of income or additional savings because there's already so much money in there that when it compounds, it compounds to a pretty large sum of money every single year. Foreign investment hasn't changed much. We are still invested in a hotel in Kyoto, Japan, but because the pandemic hasn't ended, there's pushback on timeline in terms of flipping it and selling it. So the original plan was to flip it within five years and sell it again, but it looks like we're going to wait longer for that to happen. For real estate, we still own that condo in Toronto. And luckily, with the pandemic, at least people going back to work, people coming back into downtown, we will no longer be losing money monthly on this condo in terms of rental income. Um, we're definitely operating at a loss through the last year of the pandemic. But in July, we're hoping we're hoping to raise prices to market rate where at least the rental income will cover our mortgage payments and will still probably be a hundred dollars per month under the bus where we have to pay up for condo fees and mortgage but we're getting there the diversified portfolio is robo investing it pretty much hasn't changed we reduced it a little bit what has seen a significant increase slash decrease is we stopped stock picking. So instead of choosing individual stocks, which represented 7.85% of our portfolio, which is the last line here, we sold all of our individual stocks because we think investing into S&P 500 or robo investing, it already kind of covers the stock picking for us. And we're not that good at it. Most of the time, S&P 500 will beat the individual stocks anyway. And if we're going to do research into anything, we might as well do research into altcoins in crypto. <laughs> equity has increased a little bit. That's our company equity, our angel investments into different companies. The new income streams that I hope to bring into 2022 is I'm ready to start dipping my toes in again at buying another property. This time, um, my aim is to buy a cash flowing property. So when you purchase real estate, the condo in Toronto, we were hoping that it would just inflate in value over the next few years. This time, I'm looking for a property where it's cash flow positive from the beginning. Most likely, we're going to be looking at states with um, cheaper homes and cheaper housing. I'm thinking about putting a maximum of $50,000 down this time on a hot rental market. That is a plan. I'm taking a course on this right now on how to find a property manager, how to actually value different homes, how to potentially buy a fixer upper and get it, you know, up the value of it through different renovations. There's a lot to learn in this space and I'm excited to tackle that. The second income stream that I'm hoping to change and build up a bit more is my crypto portfolio. I'm taking a DeFi course right now, so really looking to get a bit more hands on on the way that we invest and grow our income through Web3 technologies as well as crypto. And the goal is to put $5,000 in, which I did on January 1st. The goal is to 10x that over the next year. I'm really excited to make more videos on this topic as well. Let me know below which income stream you find the most interesting and which one you want to follow along the most for. I hope you enjoyed this. I definitely am really excited to start building a lot of these income streams and to share it with all of you. So make sure you subscribe for these updates. With that, see you soon.